one of the paradoxes in psychiatry is that we're over-treating people who don't need it and neglecting people who really do. And the, the field of psychiatry keeps expanding so that more and more normal people are being considered mentally ill. This has been tremendously increased by drug company advertising. And the natural question is, do the drug companies influence the diagnostic system so that they'll have more customers? In my experience, the drug companies have had no influence at all on the people working on DSM. That they make sometimes very bad decisions, but they do it because of an intellectual, not a financial conflict of interest. They overvalue their own area of research and want to expand it. And I think that they don't sufficiently realize the risks of the expansion, particularly since the drug companies are, are then able to go and market the DSM to, to, to doctors and to patients. So I'd be very, very cautious if I were a clinician and very cautious if I'm a consumer. If, I, if a patient has a mild problem, very often medication won't be necessary. What should a consumer do in this situation? Don't lose your common sense. Be informed. Ask questions. Don't accept a diagnosis just because it's given to you. Don't start a treatment unless it seems to make sense. Very often, it's comforting to get a diagnosis. And it's a, a wonderful thought. I'll take this medicine and I'll be better. But, but very frequently, the diagnosis will be inaccurate if it's made too quickly without careful evaluation over time because many, many problems get better on their own. Getting a diagnosis is a very important moment in a person's life. It can be as important as buying a house or choosing a wife. A good diagnosis leads to wonderful treatment that will be helpful. An inaccurate diagnosis can lead to treatment that will be very harmful and will last a long time and cause a lot of heartache. So you should insist that the diagnosis fit your needs and you should be patient. If the problem is urgent, get the diagnosis, get the treatment quickly. If the problem is mild, wait and see. Maybe try psychotherapy first. Very often, a patient is seeing a doctor on the very worst day of, of his life and wants help quickly. Getting a diagnosis gives comfort and receiving a pill makes it seem like the problem is solved. I would worry though that rush diagnosis is often wrong diagnosis. The diagnosis takes time, time in any one session and many sessions over time to be sure. And I would always want caution not jumping to conclusions, waiting to see what happens before. In the past 20 years, we've already had three false epidemics of psychiatric disorder. The rates of attention deficit disorder have tripled, the rates of autism have grown by 40%, and the rates of bipolar disorder have doubled. People change slowly. Diagnostic systems can change very quickly. Never believe that an epidemic is true. When the rates change quickly, it's more how the people are being labeled. It's not that the people have, have changed. DSM-5 will make all this worse. In DSM-5, normal grief becomes major depressive disorder. The forgetting of old age becomes minor neurocognitive disorder. The temper tantrums of children become disruptive mood dysregulation disorder. The, the um, overeating becomes binge eating disorder. And almost everyone can qualify for attention deficit disorder. People who have cancer and are worried about their symptoms can be diagnosed as having somatic symptom disorder. The problem is turning the normal, everyday, understandable human experiences into mental disorders. And that would be okay if, if this led to better treatment and better outcomes, but it doesn't. We need to accept that life can be filled with pain. We need to accept the limitations of psychiatry, that we do very well treating people who have clear-cut mental disorders, that we don't do very well when we start mislabeling the everyday problems of, of human existence.
One of the things we're learning, not just in psychiatry, but in all of medicine, that is that the thresholds for, for defining disease have been lowered too much. We're treating people, testing people, more than is healthy for them. The past 30 years, there's been a great emphasis on preventive medicine, getting a diagnosis early, instituting treatment before the disease can cause damage. We're learning now that screening for, for many diseases has identified people who would be much better left alone. Until recently, men were told to have prostate testing for cancer. Now it turns out that that doesn't extend life. Instead, it causes remarkably aggressive and harmful treatments. There's been too much testing for breast cancer. There's been too low a, a blood pressure expectation too much control for blood sugars and diabetes. Almost every woman over 60 was told that she had a problem with osteoporosis. We're learning in the rest of medicine that overdiagnosis and overtreatment can cause more harm than good. And now I think psychiatry has followed that same path to overdiagnosis and overtreatment. Everyone needs to exert common sense in this. I would recommend that everyone Google something called Choosing Wisely. This is a new initiative amongst many medical specialties to restrict diagnosis to where it will be helpful. And I think that this same concept will be very useful in psychiatry.